it is tournament day. Uh, we're out, it's cold weather. I got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tony Acevedo over here. And uh, we have a slam tournament. We're on our way out right now. We have a little bit of a late start. It's freezing cold. The wind's ripping out of the north. The front's coming through, or front just came through. This water is super low. It's the lowest I've ever seen it on the seawall. And, uh, and so we have to get a snook, redfish, sea trout, and we're gonna be trying them in that order. Snook is gonna be the toughest to get, uh, given the, the cold. And uh, so we're gonna be uh, probably dock fishing first. And I have uh, about five spots picked out. Tony's been doing some map search as well. And so we'll get up there and uh, just bounce some slam shadies on, uh, on jig heads along the bottom. And uh, we'll see what we can get into. But finally, out of the idle zone, let's do it. Get it. So we've recorded the entire trip. This is the way out. And so what we'll do is we'll show exactly how we competed with some really good anglers who were using live bait and cut bait while we were just using artificial lures and specifically just a couple different lures. And, and what we did is we just followed a game plan. We followed a proven game plan that we knew would be good based on the conditions, right? Based on the weather and the tides. And then we just used a good lure. In this case, it was a slam shady. And, and we just used it all day long and we just, we stuck to the game plan. We stuck to the, the type of spots based on the conditions and it proved to work. We were catching fish all day long. We had a blast and it actually started at the very beginning. This was my very first cast and uh, here in a second I hook up. So the, the, the bite started from cast number one and, uh, and we really just had a great, a really good trip. That was a little trout I got off before the boat. So I wasn't too, too upset. It was a little tiny trout. But I'll just fast forward a couple casts. And so this is Tony, Tony's third cast. Tony's there on the right. And he made a cast up by the dock. And, and what we were doing is we were just following the exact game plan that we that we showed to the Insider Club members the day before. Is it where every Friday we go out and show, you know, show the recent trends and then look at the upcoming weather and, and basically just say exactly what to do. And so in this case, based on the conditions, it was it was target docks, target deeper docks and go low and slow with jigs. And so as you saw, Tony was reeling in real slow. And here's here's a snook. So this was the species that was supposed to be the hardest to catch. And uh, and we fortunately got one on the board right away. That was a 22 inch snook, not a giant, but but on a cold day like that, especially in the morning, that was, uh, that was a huge relief because that was the species that I was most worried about uh, that day. So we kept fishing this spot, um, we missed some strikes. Obviously we, we had that trout that got off and wanted to at least get a trout on board since we knew there were there were some there and so stuck out just a little bit longer um, again you can just watch me i'm about to hook up i'm going just super slow just doing slow bounces on the bottom because again it's cold these fish are not going to be moving very aggressively and they're uh, finally got a hook set on one and uh, again this wasn't a giant but we at least were just one species away from the slam all right, so first spot was uh, was good. We got a snook on the board. That was what I thought was gonna be the toughest one. Tony, Tony knocked it out real fast. And, uh, and we have a little dink trout. So it's a yeah, 22 inch snook and a 10 inch trout. So we're uh, we're 30, we're 32 inches on the board now. Better than nothing, but we, we definitely have to do better. So now we're gonna uh, try some more docks, uh, try a little bit further up and hopefully we can get a redfish. And if we can just get a slam, that'll be a big relief. That'll be a a feat on a cold morning like this so we're gonna pick up a move and see how it goes all right so spot number two was uh, was really this little canal that this little bridge that that also had some some docks nearby and so basically again just just slow bouncing these jigs on the bottom we were getting a lot of strikes the the fish were just very just not aggressive but they, they were at least hitting we just had to get the lures right there in their face and really the, the big advantage on, on lures versus live bait is that we can just cover so much ground. And that's what you're gonna see in this video is we covered a lot of water. And then in many cases, the, the better spots, we would actually go back and fish a second time. And that's actually when we caught our biggest fish. And so here, we'll just slow it down. We're about to, about to hook up. Again, you can see how slow we're moving. We have quarter ounce jig heads with these, uh, the three and a half inch slam shadies. I believe that actually Tony had, the, I always had a three, three and a half inch slam shady. Tony had the four at this point. And, uh, and again, just the, the key though was to get down low, get down right on the bottom. There was another trout, a little bit bigger. So we're growing. Uh, there's a, a grouper. You can see that a grouper. Uh, they, they love these baits as well. And uh, just caught a variety of fish. We just had a lot of action. Just show kind of some snippets here. There was a little lizard fish. Uh, definitely not a, an ideal species, but 
again, every strike. So tournaments are just fun. I haven't done tournament in a while, and I just kind of forgot how exciting they were because just every every hook set is just that much more exciting because you never know which one's going to be the giant one. So there, Tony hooked up again. There's a, a solid rod bin there. That was another snook. Uh, it was smaller than 22 inches, so we didn't bother measuring it or anything. And so here is here's where we went back to the, the very first spot. Um, if you recognize that those white pilings back there, that's the, the dock that Tony got the first 22 inch snook on. And so we went right back over there and hook up and this was a nice fish. You can see that snook coming up on the surface. We immediately knew that this was a big one. So obviously I put my rod down, time to get the net out and, uh, and just hope that this fish didn't get off. The snook ended up making a, a last second run and almost got around the trolling motor. Tony, Tony was quick to, to take action. And I uh, got it under control and we got that thing in the boat and that was just a huge relief. Ended up being uh, a little bit over 33 inches, which is which is awesome for uh, for a cold morning like that. What a what a great fish. So we kept we kept doing the same game plan, right? It was working. Why stop? And so fishing docks with the jigs and I just hooked up. This was a, a, a solid fish. I uh, just right then realized this was a really nice trout. This was a solid trout. Getting very excited. Then the hook pulled out. Super bummed. It's always, a, it's always, a, it's just rough to, to lose a fish on any day, but when it's tournament day and a big fish gets off, uh, man, it's a, it's a heartbreaker. But what I did is I just, uh, I just turned back around after I collected my, myself at least, uh, went back around, made another cast in there and, and sure enough, ended up hooking up again. This trout, it was, uh, I feel like the first one was a little bit bigger, but the second one was still solid. And uh, again, you can just watch my rod tip. Was, I was keeping it low, doing some small little jerks. There, uh, there it finally hit. And uh, yeah, again, we immediately knew this was a, a legit trout, obviously much bigger than the little 10 inch one that we had on board so far. And, uh, and this was a solid fish. We knew that we had uh, a really good shot now. The fact that we had a good, a good trout that was, uh, was 19 and a half inches. So good trout. And then, and then that snook was a, was a really good head start. All we needed was a redfish. I was hoping this was a redfish the, the way that it hit, but then it finally came up to the surface and, and did a head shake. And that's when we, we saw that it was a snook. All right, so we're moving again. Spot number two was good as well. So now we have a 19 and a half inch trout, a 33 inch snook. We're actually sitting in pretty good shape. And what time is it now? It's actually pretty, uh, yeah, it's a 9.45. So off to a good start. Now we just need a redfish and we'll actually have pretty good, pretty good chance here. So on the way to spot number three, we had to cross the bay. And so just here's a look at how windy it was. This is not a big bay and there were white caps. It was just, it was pretty gnarly. We got soaked going across. But what we did is we we went to again another similar spot. It was again the type of spot that was that was part of the game plan that that we again that we gave to the Insider Club members, and it's a wind protected shoreline. It was uh, an area with deep water and structure. In this case, it was oysters, and and a redfish was exactly where it was supposed to be. I hooked up one of my first casts up there, and darn it, the thing uh, got off. So this is super bummed. I, uh, this is number two fish that I lost on tournament day. Uh, I didn't see it, but it was fighting just like a red. And so we decided, okay, we know there's redfish here. Let's keep fishing the creek and, uh, and just, you know, just finally, finally get lock in our slam. Cause you, you basically have to have a slam to get the tournament there. Tony hooked up another snook. Then he got another snook every time we, we were in redfish territory. And uh, so every hook set was just a thrill. And then we see a snook come up, which, uh, which is awesome. But, uh, but it was just not what we were looking for. And so went over to a, another little dock line. And, and again, you can just see how it looks calm here, but the wind was, was absolutely cranking still. Uh, we were just, you know, fishing the, the wind protected areas um, because that's, again, that's, that's what statistically should be working. And so there was a nice snook. Again, another false alarm for redfish. And uh, that was, again, on the Slam Shady, as was everything else you've been seeing so far. And so I uh, got, got a cast up under this dock. This was just one dock down from where that snook was. And we found a nice little pocket of fish here. So I got a, another cast, you know, another hook set. Again, hoping it was a redfish. Then, then we see the snook come up and shake his head. And uh, and again, another <laughs> another snook. And just uh, just man, where are these redfish? Is what we were thinking. Starting to get nervous. This was getting about, uh, I believe it was around like 10:30, almost 11 o'clock, and we still didn't have a redfish. And uh, and that was the actually the species that I was least worried about. Uh, but just you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, and so finally, this is where it finally changed. So I got a cast of the Slam Shady, uh, jigging it slow, just like before. And there, we finally saw it. Okay, finally, we have a redfish. And so Tony, uh, Tony got the net out. 
and uh, and we are just about to uh, to finally lock in our slam. And at this point, we were really pumped. You know, now you can see I'm I'm really really happy there. That was a big relief. We we were trying for quite a while to get that red, and uh, finally had it in the boat. I locked in the slam. What time is it now, dude? Uh, 11. 11? 11. 11.10. Took longer than planned, but man. <laughs> Got it. We'll go up there and see if there's some more. Yeah, and so instincts paid off. So we started making our way back up there. And uh, again, just, just covering it as slow, just really slow. We knew fish were in the area. So we were just trying to make the best out of it. Uh, the, there weren't that many wind protected areas uh, this day. So we had to just make the best of what we could, uh, what we could actually fish. And there Tony hooks up and uh, could tell it was something bigger and that's when we finally saw it. I just noticed that, uh, that it was a redfish, much bigger than the one that, uh, that I just caught. And so uh, obviously I put the rod down as fast as I could. I wanted to be ready with that net because, you know, again, tournament days like this, you know, you never know how many, how many opportunities you're going to get. So try to be as careful as possible. Tony got the head up, got the net under it, and there we are. Now we're locked in. That was a solid 24-inch red. And uh, now we were really in for uh, for being up there on the leaderboard. So we stopped for a bite to eat, and then uh, and then started fishing in. We're fishing some uh, some deeper shorelines, and uh, hooked into this really nice trout. It might be twenty. Shady. So that trout ended up being just a hair over 20 inches, so that's now our top trout. And then shortly after, Tony hooks up to a nice snow. This is only 20 pound meter. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Another snagger. Close. <laughs> Real close. Wow. Good fish. So that snook was just over 31 inches. It, it wasn't quite bigger than the 33 we already had, but what a cool catch. In the lure there, that was uh, Tony switched over to the gulp shrimp, trying to, the gulp shrimp to get a little bit more depth on uh, on his retrieve compared to the paddle tail. And that snook popped it, and yeah, what a cool catch. So shortly after this, we ended up heading back in and, uh, and went to the weigh-in to see how we did. All right, so now we're at the awards banquet. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this to kind of explain what's ha what's happening. So we were chatting with some of the some of the other anglers, and and a lot of people had a really tough day. And so we knew that we had a good shot here. We had a solid slam. Our official length was 77 and, and a fourth inches, and obviously the longest length wins. And so we knew we had a good shot. He announces third place that was 73 inches. So we automatically knew we were in the top two, which is awesome. But there, then he says that there was an actual a tie. And that was the first time they've ever had a tie. And, and he did, obviously part of the rules were that if there is a tie, it's whoever gets to the weigh-in first. So I immediately was regretting taking my sweet time when we got back. I had literally washed off the boat. I washed off the rods and reels. I didn't have a dog sitter for Otis, so I, I you know, fed him and played with him for a little bit. And then we just just showed into the uh, the weigh-in like 10 or 15 minutes before the official time. And I now immediately knew that that was a big mistake. And what was the tiebreaker? Had to be here. Whoever checked in first. So in second place, 77.25 inches. Salt Stroll! Luke and Tony, get up here. You guys get it all on artificial. Wow. wow. Sure was a fun tournament, even though the end didn't quite go as, uh, as well as planned. But, but yeah, it just was a blast. And it was just really fun just to be up on the leaderboard. That's always a plus, especially knowing that there's some full-time guides in there. Just some really good anglers. And I believe we were the only ones, uh, only ones using artificial only. But this was just a, a testament to the fact that, that you don't, first of all, you don't have to have live bait. But, but the key, the key to success isn't the lures, isn't the baits. We didn't have any fancy lures, as you saw. We were just using two basic lures. But the key to success was having the proper game plan because every single day, really every single second throughout every day, 
90% of the fish are going to be in 10% of the water, but based on the conditions, that 10% is going to be moving around, right? Those fish are going to be moving around. And if you know how to predict where those fish are going to be, you're going to be catching a bunch of fish. And that's really the key to our fishing club. Here is what I mentioned before. I was talking about the, the game plan. So every single week, based on the most recent trends, as well as the upcoming weather, we share exactly what to look for. We talk about th that 10% that zone that is going to have most of the fish. And, and this was the one. So this was just, uh, you know, this was the, the weekend of the tournament. And this, this report explained exactly what we did, right? We we're talking about fishing docks, fishing deep, fishing jigs, low and slow. And so for all the insider members who watch this, they actually did really good. In fact, we actually had a member, let me pull up this picture, but we had a member who was, uh, who was in the tournament. This is Tom here, and he won the kayak division of this same tournament right and he did a very similar game plan right he just used you know the real-time trends and the forecast from the insider community platform and, and use that to to literally win win the tournament we won a good amount of money got this uh, got this cool trophy and it was just really fun there was a, a pretty good amount of insider club members in the tournament so it was nice to to network this is a group of, uh, of insiders here and, and that's just uh, again another benefit of the insider club not only do we give you the most recent trends you can also can network a lot of people in tournaments and even local meetups in the community because we now have over 12,000 members, which is which is awesome. And so this is the, the reports map. So now we have a platform, it's a private platform where members can create their own reports. And we have members all the way to Texas, all the way up, you know, all the way up north of Virginia. And if you zoom in, there's just an absolute ton of reports. And again, this is a, a, just a really helpful community, but, but overall, right, this is really for, for anglers who are just serious about inshore fishing. You like catching redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, and also the, the migratory fish like tarpon, cobia, triple tail. When they're in round, obviously we're going to incorporate those into the, into the game plans. But, but really, uh, you know, if you haven't yet tried this club, highly recommend doing so. There's no, there's no contracts. There's no, no small print. You can join for as long or as little as you like. Best of all, we know this is good. We know you're going to love it. So we actually offer a 365-day, 100% thrilled guarantee, whereas you get an entire year to, to use it, test it, make sure you're catching more fish than ever before, and also saving money. We now have a lot of group discounts. Now that we have over 12,000 members, we have discounts across a lot of very popular brands. So stuff you're probably already buying, you can now save a ton of money. And again, if somehow you don't think it's the best investment in fishing you've ever made, let us know and we'll process a full re refund, no questions asked. So if you are a saltwater fisherman and you just want to take your game up to the next level, whether you're a tournament guy who wants to start winning tournaments or if you're, if you're relatively new and you just want to just get more consistent and, and just go out and, and be confident that you're going to be in that 10% zone every trip, then, then give, this, give this club a shot. You have nothing to lose. You have an entire lifetime of fishing to gain. So click down below. I'll put a link down or just go straight to our website, saltstrong.com. You can learn about the Insider Fishing Club there. Thank you so much for your time and watching this video. Hope to see you in the club soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today